I'm Kent Myers. I'm Mick Cornett, and it's time for the verdict. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy Law Firm presents The Verdict, an objective discussion of contemporary legal issues hosted by Kent Myers. And also brought to you by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children and Delta Dental Plan of Oklahoma. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. Well, as our regular viewers will know, this is a show where we weekly discuss topical legal issues in a way that's, we think at least, is easy to understand. Let me introduce my co-host here, Kent Myers, one of the state's outstanding legal experts. And Kent, this show just a little bit different. First of all, we're at a different site. Well, we are. We're pleased to be at Oklahoma State University in uh, Stillwater. We uh, are excited about the chance of filming from uh, their fine facilities here and to discuss uh, some issues with guests uh, that uh, have a lot to do with Oklahoma State University. Another uh, interesting uh, new part for the verdict this, uh, this show is that this is our first show to be aired in Tulsa. We will be on Fox uh, Channel 23 in Tulsa, uh, and we hope to be on there for a long time. Of course, we're on Fox Channel 25 in Oklahoma City. And I think the fact that we are inaugurating our uh, viewership in Tulsa fits very nicely with what we've got in mind for today. Today we're going to be talking about Oklahoma State University, Tulsa, uh, the campus at Tulsa that is affiliated and a part of, an integral part of Oklahoma State University. I think that's going to be a very exciting development as it, as it goes forward for the future for Tulsa and for the students. Mick, I have uh, six children and I have two that are graduates from Oklahoma State University. And the thing that they tell me besides simply getting a great education is that they love the atmosphere, they love the friendly experience that they uh, uh, had here in Stillwater. And I think that's an exciting uh, possibility for the people of Tulsa, the students who are going to be attending at Tulsa, to experience the same kind of OSU friendly atmosphere there that is obviously present here. Well, there are a lot of exciting changes in higher education in the state of Oklahoma, and we'll be back to discuss them right here on The Verdict after this. This program is brought to you by the friendly people at Stillwater National Bank, with offices in Stillwater, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and Chickasha. Member FDIC. I enrich our cultural landscape. I help define our quality of life. I am one of 4,000 artists in central Oklahoma who receive support from Allied Arts, this community's united arts organization. I am. I am. I am an Allied artist. I wasn't going to school because I was hanging with the wrong crowd. And one day, I was put into juvie for two stolen cars, robbery of a house, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And I was locked up. That's when I really realized that, I mean, it wasn't for me. Like, I was only in there two months, but to me, that was enough. It'd be better for me to stay in school, just get my education. I think I'm happier now. I know I'm happier now. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent, why don't you introduce our guests? We are just thrilled today to have two guests uh, that are eminently qualified to talk about the University of uh, uh, Oklahoma State University in Tulsa. Uh, on my left is Dr. James Halligan, the president of Oklahoma State University. He is also the chief executive officer of Oklahoma State University Systems, the 16th president 
of Oklahoma State University and uh, has been, held that office since 1994. Uh, he was previously uh, president of New Mexico State University for 10 years. And I think most people would agree that he is what my partner, Dean Stringer, has labeled him a student's president. Dr. Halligan, thank you for coming. That's a wonderful introduction. <laughs> <laughs> my grandchildren will enjoy it. Well, Dean Stringer knows what he's talking about. Uh, on my right is Dr. Gary Trenopol. Uh, Dr. Trenopol is president of Oklahoma State University, Tulsa, and has been for the last two years. Uh, he was previously the dean of the College of Business Administration at the University at Oklahoma State University in uh, Stillwater, and is a an author and a true uh, nationwide expert in finance. Uh, he's a Tulsa native and a Vietnam vet. Dr. Trenopol, uh, glad that you could be with us. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you, Dr. Halligan. Let me ask you, uh, starting off, in 1998, the legislature took some action to to put OSU Tulsa in place. Can you explain that to our viewers a little bit? Well, previous to that time, the state regions who really control programs in Oklahoma, they had decided that OSU would offer very, very limited undergraduate programs in Tulsa. And then they actually came to my office, their representative came to my office and said, we'd like to expand your operations in Tulsa. Uh, there was a significant amount of discussion uh, with, in the legislature concerning this initiative. But uh, when it was all said and done, OSU was given a mandate to go to Tulsa and to markedly expand our programs. And I'm really delighted, I have to say, that Gary Trenopol was kind enough to take on this assignment to be president of this new campus for us uh, because it's very important to the economic development of Oklahoma that we ensure that both Oklahoma City and Tulsa and all the other parts of Oklahoma are economically viable. And that's what I think OSU Tulsa can do. Well, back to these uh, initial days of OSU Tulsa, uh, a good friend of mine, and I know a friend of yours, Bob McCormick uh, from Stillwater, uh, was instrumental, I think, in, in having this uh, come about. Can you tell our viewers what his role was? Well, he was chairman of the Board of Regents, State Regents, at that time. And uh, as you would anticipate, whenever something this momentous is taking place, really changing the structure of higher education in Oklahoma, there were people on both sides of this, and it's very easy to understand that it, uh, they were looking out for their individual interests. But Bob McCormick stood tall at that time in terms of our getting a mandate such that we could go into Tulsa and make a difference. And so as the history of this is written, Bob McCormick needs to get appropriate recognition. Well, he, he's been good at everything he's yeah. done. I'm not surprised he did yeah. well in that. Uh, Dr. Trenopole, uh, what do you uh, view as the uh, thought behind OSU Tulsa? What, what is its mission? What's it trying to accomplish that hasn't been accomplished before? I think that's a very good question, very fair question. The, uh, what we're trying to do is bring comprehensive university education opportunities to the people of Tulsa and really northeastern Oklahoma. And that really was not available in any broad sense prior to the formation of OSU Tulsa. Are these undergraduate degrees? They are now both. Uh, yeah, historically, Give us an example. What undergraduate sure. degrees could a person get at OSU Tulsa? We've started some business programs in, in finance, for one, uh, in marketing. In, uh, we're, we're doing one in telecommunications. It's going to be a new one that will be coming on within the next year, telecommunications management. We've got a lot of engineering programs at the undergraduate level. Um, a few in, the, in some of the other selected areas, but we've been focusing on some of the technology disciplines. Computer science is another one that really serve the industries that are in Tulsa and northeastern Oklahoma. And do students live on campus? No, right now they do not. How would the, the tuition to take a course at OSU Tulsa, for mm -hmm. instance, compare to the tuition to take the same course or a similar course at OSU Stillwater? It's virtually the same. There might be a difference with respect to a fee that, that we charge or OSU and Stillwater charges that's just not appropriate in that environment, but otherwise it's the same. I think I've, I'd, I'd like to say we're really trying to conduct a very unique experiment here, right. and that is when we went into Tulsa, we said we'll begin offering engineering programs, but we'll not hire a dean of engineering, we'll not hire a head of electrical engineering. When we started the business programs, we didn't hire new department heads or new deans. We said it's going to be one university, multiple sites. 
and so we're going to have just one faculty. And of course, now we have a bus system that's running between the two yeah, sites. Uh, Gary rode over here on the bus, and uh, it's being very successful. Uh, so what we're really trying to do, I have one of my sons is in business, and he said, Dad, they would never reproduce the administrative structure. And that's what we have avoided by what we are doing between OSU in Stillwater and OSU Tulsa. And I think the thing to keep in mind is that the degrees we offer over there are OSU degrees. It's not OSU Tulsa, and these are not OSU Stillwater here. They're the same degree, the same degree requirements, mostly the same faculty. And the same value, I think that's the same value. I mean, that's yeah. the issue that we really mm -hmm. want to bring, as you mentioned earlier, what's the purpose, is bringing the comprehensive university degree opportunity to northeastern Oklahoma. So an OSU Tulsa student uh, will take some courses perhaps in on the Tulsa campus and might be bused to Stillwater to take some other courses. They are free to choose however they want to do that and I think we'll see students on both campus taking taking classes on both campuses throughout their career if they so choose, especially if they're from Tulsa. Well, uh, Dr. Halligan, I read that there were other universities somehow cooperatively involved, at least initially, maybe sure. still, mm -hmm. in this uh, mission. Can uh, Northeastern, Correct. Langston, right. OU. Uh, how does that work, and, and what what is their role in this? Northeastern, of course, is moving to a campus in Broken Arrow. They have a beautiful new facility there in Broken Arrow, and I'm confident that they're going to be very successful. If you really look at the metroplexes between Tulsa and Oklahoma City, Tulsa was really underserved, and I think with what the legislature has done, that there's plenty of room for everybody to be successful there. But OSU has really been focusing in on business, technology, engineering, uh, telecommunications. Those are the things that we have initially brought forward on that campus because that's what industry wanted. When we asked industry what, what they wanted, the number one degree they wanted was international business. And so we began offering that. Uh, the, uh, the student that enrolls in OSU uh, Tulsa, what kind of extracurricular activities uh, will that student have as compared to the student on the Stillwater campus? Okay. The, uh, the student body that we currently have are what we, we call them in the education industry, they're non-traditional students. Uh, virtually all of them are employed and they're taking classes starting at 4.30 in the afternoon running to 10 o'clock at night. They've got their own so they've got their own job, activities. they've got their own deal. They're not worried about extracurricular activities. <laughs> but we are, we are doing things because we want to build the daytime market and opportunities for students as well. So we will be offering more daytime classes as we proceed and, and hire faculty and add programs over there. Uh, we currently offer uh, some of the student services. In fact, the director we have for student services on our campus is the same who works here in Stillwater. And so students who want to recruit, uh, go you know, talk to recruiters and, and look at placement opportunities can do so at either campus. We do career fairs in Tulsa. We do career fairs over here in Stillwater. And it's bringing those kinds of services that really uh, are appropriate to the non-traditional student. Let me jump in here. We're going to go to a break. We're discussing Oklahoma State University in Tulsa. I'm Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and our guests will be right back on The Verdict. Yeah, campfire is a lot of fun. You get to make some friends. You get to do some cool stuff. Campfires for boys too, not just girls. But hey, campfires definitely for kids. So call the campfire office nearest you to join in on the fun. Cause let's face it, you're not getting any younger. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Keeping it fourth and seven on the Tiger 46 yard line. 38 seconds on the clock. The Tigers have no choice but to go. Uh.
go on the shopping spree of your dreams and get the savings of a lifetime. For just $50, you can buy this card that will save you hundreds. Here's how it works. The Care Card is good for 20% off every purchase you make for a week starting November 3rd. So start your holiday shopping a little earlier this year and watch it pay off at more than 125 stores and restaurants. Proceeds benefit family and children's services and the Simon Estes Educational Foundation. To get your Care Card, call 587-9471. Look at me. At me. At me. At me. At me. Just someone from Noble. Hydro. Oklahoma City. Winoka. Lawton, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State University saw. A leader. A reporter. A pilot. A road scholar. A trader. Who's inside of you? Come discover yourself at O S U. We are back on the verdict, and I wanted to ask President Trenopol, uh, I know there are some other universities involved with OSU Tulsa. We discussed Northeastern right. momentarily. What about OU and Langston? What's their involvement? The, uh, the prior, prior consortium consisted of Northeastern, OSU, OU, and Langston, and that uh, is being dissolved by law in July of this year, actually. And we are beginning independent operations or working toward that with the four schools. And OU is, uh, has a campus at 41st and Yale and has moved most of their health care programs there and is moving other is that programs. The Schusterman out. Campus? It's called the Schusterman Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, long term, they will probably have much of their operations will be located out there. The uh, Langston University is operating on our campus now and will continue to do so in the future. Uh, the historic Greenwood site, uh, mm -hmm. the site of uh, of Black Wall Street and a lot of things that relate to black history in Tulsa, very appropriate and I think important for them to be located in that side. So we'll be working together on that campus. Now what size presence do they have there? They, uh, their uh, credit hours that they generate are about the same right now as ours. Hmm. Historically they've had most of the undergraduate programs and Northeastern had most of the undergraduate programs so they had uh, larger enrollments compared to those of us teaching the graduate classes. If, if a student enrolls in OSU Tulsa, <coughs> can they take a course at Langston uh, on the same campus? Or sure. On the we, have, campus? we have cooperative agreements with all the schools. That makes it a little easier being there in Tulsa just to work together that way. Well, <coughs> uh, let me ask you, uh, uh, Dr. Halligan, um, I saw a phrase that was 20 by 2020. What does that mean? Well, it's our objective to have 20,000 students at the OSU Tulsa site by the year 2020. And we think that's really doable. If you look at the Oklahoma City Metroplex and compare it to the Tulsa Metroplex, it, uh, it is just what should be there right now, in my judgment, in order for uh, us to ensure that Oklahoma can move forward economically. Because we don't have enough college graduates in Oklahoma, particularly in some of the technology areas. And it really holds us back, I think, in terms of our economic development. Well, by 2020, do you expect dormitories or athletic programs to be associated here too? Yeah, we, we have currently <laughs> have, and I'll defer to President Trenopol, we currently have plans on the way for the first set of housing uh, on the uh, Tulsa site, and he can speak to that. We, we are, uh, going to be acquiring some more land. We have about 200 acres of land there, which most people don't realize that the city is deeded to OSU for the purpose of expanding the campus. But the third penny sales tax extension that was recently passed will be used to acquire the rest of that land, and we'll be building some apartment style, I call it community, university community housing, because it'll be available to, to students and to faculty and even to staff. Athletic teams? Athletic teams, no. This is the question I, you know, they want to know when are you going to start a football team? We're not going to do that. We have a football team. It's right here in Stillwater. Again, it's one university. Well, let's, let's talk about the city of Tulsa's involvement a little bit in, sure. uh, in the formation. Uh, you mentioned the sales tax. I take it the voters of the city of Tulsa passed the sales tax to assist in this, uh, in this endeavor. The uh, sales tax that was passed was an extension of the third penny tax that has been, comes up every five years. And that 
uh, tax is used to acquire land for urban development and other kinds of things through the Tulsa Development Authority. Mm. That's the support that's given. They're getting the land, but we have to do the rest of it. Yeah. What, what kind of reception have you had by the city of Tulsa and their leaders uh, to this concept of OSU Tulsa? Just wonderful. Absolutely. We have been embraced. And that's, that's really heartfelt on my part. Uh, Ann and I, of course, have a uh, condominium in Tulsa out at Yorktown. And so we spend uh, some time in Tulsa. Gary lives there on a full-time basis. But I think there's a clear recognition, particularly in the Tulsa Chamber of Commerce, but uh, in Williams and all the other industries in Tulsa, that we are in a vital partnership for the future, that they need us and we need them in order to succeed. Well, back to the 20 by 2020 for just a second. Uh, in order for you to reach that goal, will that necessitate other schools losing enrollment to the Tulsa campus? Uh, or do you just think there that by that time there will be that many more s potential students in the Oklahoma population? Well, we need to markedly enhance our graduation rate in Oklahoma. Uh, OSU has a specific program to try to get from 48 to 65 percent of our freshmen graduating. The last two years, over 80 percent of our freshmen on the Stillwater campus have become sophomores, and that's a wonderful beginning. Well, that's well above yeah. the national average. That's so correct. That's We're doing very, very well in that, er in that area. But more importantly, if you just think about what Oklahoma needs, they need more college graduates. Graduates, and it's perfectly reasonable for us to expect that. And Gary, you might talk about the growth rate that we have to have. I tell you, we're at a point where we need to kind okay. of wrap this up. I was sure. going to give each of you an opportunity to discuss something that maybe we haven't discussed in the show. And if that's the topic you choose to discuss, Gary, jump right in there. Go All ahead. Right. Our, our objective, if we grow on an average rate of 15% a year, we'll get to 20,000 students by 2020. And I think that is our vision. We want to be a crown jewel for Tulsa and provide the educational opportunities that the people of northeastern Oklahoma really want. And if we do it right, we'll have 20,000 students. Mm -hmm. And you grew 60 percent this year. That's right. In so credit hours. It's very doable. And I, I would just say for Stillwater and for OSU, we still want to be that special place. As you know, we're a Truman Honor Institution. We were named America's Best College by. The recent Chronicle of Higher Education has a picture of one of our graduates. They came here and interviewed us because we have that special experience on this campus whereby students who come here can really so come to full flower. And that's what OSU is really about. It is having young people come here. And I always say we want them to learn how to earn a living and learn how to live a life. And both of those things are very important. And that's what we really envision. We think we can, we can make a difference in the economic future of Oklahoma. But the way to do that is through our graduates. A lot of our graduates, a preponderance of them, stay in Oklahoma. And we think we can really make Oklahoma an exciting place to be. Dr. Halligan, Dr. Tenepole, thank you both for coming on. Kent and I'll be back to wrap it up right after this. Sun. Between this, smile, honey, keys, and this, you open this door right now. Go away! Just leave me alone. What is wrong? Even the best you kids can use some help. Me. Why won't you talk to me? This is where we come in. Youth services, giving teens a place to turn.
where above all else, character counts. <laughs> When you mentor a child, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be yourself, which, by the way, is pretty good. Do good. Mentor a child. Call 1-877-BE-A-MENTOR. And welcome back to The Verdict. We are wrapping up another edition, and today we concentrated on the educational opportunities at OSU Tulsa. And Kent, this is quite an exciting thing they've got going up there. It, it is very exciting. I know that the uh, citizens of Tulsa are going to benefit. The Tulsa community is going to benefit. It's going to be a partnership that I think uh, uh, will flourish. Uh, I, I really uh, have heard uh, for a long time and have come to believe uh, that, that the leaders set the tone for the organization. And if, if this is any, if, if our guests today are the leaders of this organization, this organization is destined to succeed because the tone is, is right, the, uh, it just feels right. Uh, I think the, uh, the citizens of Tulsa, as they do any worthwhile uh, endeavor, will embrace this, uh, this university and its organization and, and it will be a partnership uh, that will make uh, a lot of institutions around this state and, and this nation jealous. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> I want to take just a minute, Mick, to uh, thank the citizens of Tulsa for letting us come into their homes. Uh, this is a new uh, venture for us. Uh, we, uh, on the verdict, uh, enjoy very much uh, trying to bring uh, to you uh, subjects that we think are of interest. We try to bring you guests that are the best uh, possible guests for those particular subjects and we try to keep it uh, topical and timely. Uh, we are really pleased to be able to get into the eastern part of the state uh, through Fox uh, Channel 23, and we look forward to bringing you uh, shows uh, every week uh, of this caliber and uh, interest, and we hope uh, we'll stick with you. We hope you'll stick with us. And of course, we're still on Fox 25 in Oklahoma City. And the uh, website, because our Tulsa audience is not familiar with their website, no, The uh, Verdict. Tell them about it. Dot TV. And that's like not dot com, dot TV. The Verdict. Dot TV. You'll be able to look at what's coming on uh, some upcoming shows, and you'll even get to look at the bio, bio of Kent Myers. And uh, there's some exciting reading for you. <laughs> we'll be back with more on The Verdict next week. We'll see you then. This program was brought to you by Crow and Dunleavy, a professional corporation. And also brought to you by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children and Delta Dental Plan of Oklahoma.